Hello everyone and welcome to another history video. So today we're going to be taking a look at five color humans in history. I'm trying out five colors today because we got a lot of different humans from Lost Caverns of Ixalan, including Cavern of Souls, which does let us play basically any color that we want, including the fact that now all the humans that we play aren't going to be counterable anymore. So with that said, let's take a look at two of the humans that we're going to be trying out in this deck. So first off, we have Kite Sail Larcenist. This is a 3 mana human with Flying and Ward 1. It has the stats 2 and 3, pretty beefy actually. And when this comes onto the battlefield for each player, choose up to one other target artifact or creature that player controls. For as long as this card remains on the battlefield, the chosen permanent becomes a treasure artifact and lose all other abilities. So basically, I'm just going to treat this kind of like a Brutal Cathar in a sense. But the upside here is that you get a better statted creature, plus it has Flying and Ward 1, which is significantly better than what the Brutal Cathar has, which is nothing until it transforms into a werewolf. But the downside is that you do give them a treasure. And just like Brutal Cathar, if you do get rid of this card, they do come back as the creature again. But the fact that it has flying and it has ward one, I just think this is a great creature. Next up, we have another three mana human from the set called an Impacol. This is a three mana human soldier with one, two stats. The stat line for this card is pretty low, so it could get bunkers gianted or shocked. Whenever you attack with one or more non-gnome creature, you put a plus one plus one counter on this card, then create X11 colorless creature tokens tapped and attacking, where the X is the number of plus one plus one counters on this card. So every time you attack every single turn, you put a plus one plus one counter on this. If you did have a creature before and then you attack as soon as you play this card, it, this is going to grow into a 2-3. But if you Thalia's Lieutenant give this a plus one plus one counter, then it's going to create two 1-1 one -one tokens that are attacking. So these are the two cards that we're going to be taking a look at today. And because we're also dealing with a lot more three drops because of this, we are playing Avixen's Pilgrim, which does make this into a five color deck. So let's try it out. So having said that, we're going to be jumping into some historic best of three to show you guys how the deck does. So let's hop on over. Very nice. Very nice. That's a turn to Crucius. That is a turn to Crucius. If things go all right. Uh, play this out. I think this is Yagma. We have a peddler here. It's not. It's a semi Gamji deck. Okay. On them passes. Let's see what they're cooking. Interesting. Well, next turn they have collect the company. Hmm, I don't think I can give them collect the company. I think we have to deal as much damage as possible here. So that next turn, potentially, we can win. Okay, Copper Coat Vanguard. That is definitely... Double Copper Coat could win us the game. 
juggernaut. Okay, my bad. Uh, I got a call. Okay, so... Play the cover code. Obviously, it would tap the Avex on there. That's incredible. Game. How could you tap the Avex on there? I can't believe it. It's actually incredible. Actually incredible there. I would have actually not made this mistake uh, had I just <laughs> wasn't on the phone call there. Um, just like last time, I would have manually tapped this. Uh... Yeah. Okay, so we got there. Um, they're a combo deck. Let's put in some Juggernauts. Let's also put in some Brutal Cathars and Dire Tactics. Considering that I see a Healy Oak combo and collect the company, I'm guessing it's not... It's not a Samwise Gamgee? What's a Black 4 though? Double Copper Coat down. Copper Coat Vanguard. Let's go down on some Esper Sentinels and a Crucius. Oh, we got it again. It's called human. It is a Samwise Gamgee deck. Huh. I really don't want to do this, but I think we have to check an off pedaler here. Witch's Vengeance. Unfortunately, we have to take out the, um... The Collect the Company. That thing is too much of a threat. So that's a minus three, minus three. Which isn't quite minus four. You know? The best card we can draw here is like Dire Tactics or Alias Lieutenant. We need a land here. No land. No land. This is a downside of playing Avexon's Pilgrim, because this would have been a land, right? Another Witch's Vengeance. Let's not see more Witch's Vengeance, please. Okay, I also don't like seeing Collect the Company. <laughs> hmm. That's game over. Witch's Vengeance, huh? Double Avixen's Pilgrim. Okay, 
Okay. How... How does that happen? How does that happen? <laughs> how do you play Esper Sentinel with double white mana open? And you, you don't leave up a green for a Cavern of Souls. How does it happen? <laughs> curious. Very, very curious. Should, we should have another Avexon's Pilgrim there. You know? So they have a Samwise Gamgee. Double Wolf Strider. A lot of lands. They're not going to play their... Woe Strider? What? Feels like that's a mistake. Yeah, it feels like that's a mistake. Let's attack with both of them. They topped one. That's kind of scary. Okay, that's a Samwise Gamgee. That's what they topped last game, last turn. We're just going to attack with all of these. They're letting go Woe Strider. Lean, that's a good card. Okay, opponent plays a juggernaut. We're close to winning. Block, block, they take four, five, six damage. Six is just not enough. Man, where where are like all these lieutenant? Copperco Vanguard. Those are the cars that we're looking for. They have four blockers. We're gonna take the damage here. Oh man, imagine if we didn't draw Crucius. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We would have been in a devastating position.
we would have been in a really bad spot. Um, I think I'm gonna get rid of a Crucius here. And that would transform Burukathar into a werewolf with the first strike. So even if they do get a board wipe, Adeline and Burukathar are living. Sweet. Wow, we still drew land. Oh my god. That is insanity. That is actually insanity. So I do think they are still alive, but I mean, considering that they do have to block with their combo pieces here. Wow, they didn't block with the semi damage. Okay. There was really nothing much you, you can do because unless it's like a collect the company, even if, even if you do get a collect the company, you still lose the game, right? In this spot. My bad, I was, uh, I was actually really distracted that game because of a bunch of phone calls. Did even Cyborg the third game. Ooh. Oh, no, 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 we do have Avixen's Pilgrim. Very nice. Very nice, very nice. Who wins? Okay. Heal the Bruin. Hopefully we never draw our only one planes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go play the Thalia here. Trespasser. Okay. Blizzard Captain. So, I can't attack at the moment. Maybe we should just go Crucius. Okay, we got another Crucius. Okay, they have to get rid of... Uh, I mean, this is a pretty tough decision. <laughs> we got another... Ooh, I'm okay. I, I don't I don't know anymore. Is it actually Jarena plus Copper Coat? Maybe. Okay, that's game. Man, this these uh Turbo and Avixen's Pilgrim? No joke. No joke. Absolute bangers. Opponents playing a graveyard trespasser. Not really sure if I want to play a juggernaut peddler. I might just want to play a Jarena or a board white protection, maybe. But I feel like it's gonna be like languish or something, right? Like I feel like Jarena is not gonna be that good. Maybe anointed peacekeeper. Instead of a kite sail. This thing flies though. Let's try that. No one drops. Okay, well that's um pretty easy cause elect -like there.
A bit rude. A bit rude. Hmm. Why would they... I guess Shildra's Edict's not gonna kill anything. It has to kill the Avixen's Pilgrim there. I'm kinda hoping they ran out of stuff here. Thank God. Thank God opponent actually ran out of stuff. What is that? What is that? What is that? <laughs> okay, 5 mana, flying lifelink. Whenever this attacks, each opponent discards a card. For opponent who can't, you draw a card. Whenever opponent discards a land card, create a 1-1 one, one black bat creature token with a flying. When this dies, return to battlefield tapped and transform under its owner's control. A C. Well, let's go. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's just, this is kind of cool. Okay, opponent attacks. They go to 13. And they surrender. Fantastic. <laughs> hmm. Yep. All humans play this one. Yeah, that's fine. Goodbye, Adeline. Let's play out the Copper Goat Vanguard. Another Mono Black again. Wow, that actually stuck. I'm baffled? How did that stick? Oh, maybe it's like a shoulders edict. Nope, it's a painful bond. Field of Ruin. Another mono black player. Man, we're flooding. We just need one playable card. Be it. Copperco Vanguard. Inquisitor Captain's also good. Okay. Fantastic. Um, a mono black yet again. We're gonna add some Juggernaut Peddlers, Anointed Peacekeepers. I think that's about it. Um, I am going to go down on Kite Sail. Yeah, the Kite Sail hasn't been too great, huh? It hasn't been the best. Maybe I want some dire tactics in this matchup against a Shaldred, maybe? Three cars, though. 
Let's actually go down on Jirina. Um, Jirina. Last card. Last card. I will go down on... Let's actually just go down on a copy of Dire Tactics. All right. We need a top deck Crucius, please. I'll take a top deck Crucius. Juggernaut or Thalia? Oh, Juggernaut. Invoke Despair. They actually have a decent hand. This is a land, the last card. Well, that's not good. We have flooded to death. I'll have this fight I think it was actually better holding a cut down. I've always hated crowds. Wow. Obviously, I'm gonna draw another Thalia after when I have another Thalia. This That's just simple logic. To go. I think we lost this one. This this is why um Juggernaut Puddler in this matchup isn't very good. Like, I mean, it's it's good, but it's kind of mediocre. Extinction event? Ugh. That's not good. Holding this for Crucius. Oh, yes. <laughs> They're gonna call odd. That was so good. Adeline. What a comeback. We do have a situation. Opponent has triple field of ruin. So if they find out that I only play one planes, That's not good, is it?
and we pass. So even if we get Invoke the Spared, we don't lose the game because we only take 4 damage. Okay, rude. That is a lot of field ruin. Maybe I should have played the one at least. So my guess is that they play... Four Field of Ruins, four Demolition Field. GG's. Mono Black Slayer over here. Wow. Hmm. What should we get rid of? Uh, maybe it's a... Maybe it's a land. Uh, yeah, I mean, Kaisel. Well, this is dead as per Sentinel. All right. Understandable. Okay, Dag. Apparently, I wasn't supposed to bottom this. So, uh, I guess... What are we waiting for? The funny thing is, opponent's also flooding. <laughs> okay. Okay. Literally the best card we could have drawn there. As, uh, besides like Crucius or something like that. Fatal push. That is really bad. Okay, Crucius was a fantastic draw for us. Um... I mean, Questing Druid is also growing, so... But... If I attack, they get to cast the... Uh, Questing Druid again, so I should probably attack like those. Now, why did they block like that? That probably means... They have another Jar Soul, maybe? But if I do kill a Questing Druid, that means... They get to cast Questing Druid if they don't have Jar Soul. I think they expected us to kill the Questing Druid. I think I'm gonna kill the Jar Soul. K 
Okay, another Inquisitor Captain. Fantastic. That's why Crucius is so good in this deck, right? I don't want to lose the Crucius yet. I think I'll just attack with Dolly's Lieutenant. Since if, the, if they have a removal spell, they can technically grow the Questing Druid. I mean, this Crucius is just winning us the game here. Oh, they gave up. Yeah, I mean, funny thing is we both flooded, right? Seven lands, eight lands there, five, six. Seven, eight, right? We both got eight lands. We both flooded. So Fable, do want a copy of Lauren. I'm just not sure about the Kaisel Larsenist. Yeah, Kaisel Larsenist is um the card, isn't it? It's a bit weird. I think I'd rather have General Kudros and a Jarena to get rid of the graveyard instead of like using this as a removal spell, right? I think I'll go down on a copy of an, an Impacol. Yeah, I think I just go down on an Impacol. Maybe something like this. So currently Dire Tactics not usable with this mana base, but... I think it's still an okay keep. So, last turn, they had a black mana up. This came in untapped, but they didn't get rid of uh, Epixon's Pilgrim. Meaning that they probably don't have another another fatal push. I'm gonna go with the peddler here. Ritual and a brotherhood's end. Well, isn't that interesting? I'm gonna get rid of a rit um, ritual because this survives brotherhood's end. Also, currently, they don't have green source to cast the Red Tears Charm. Wish we could actually cast this here. The thing is, if I play the Thalia, I don't think I can play the Thalia here. So if I play the Kudro, attack with everything, they have to commit to a Brotherhood's End. That'll kill Juggernaut Peddler. This one and this one. I lose two creatures in total, or one. But let's say they block the Adeline. Yeah, I think this is a pass. Let them attack with a Juggernaut. You and I are gonna okay, take ouch. Him out. Chandra was pretty good there. Okay, they got 
a green source. I'm going to take the damage one more turn. I'm going to Kudro. And get rid of a Fatal Push. This would make Jarsal really, really bad. And this is a lot of damage. Oh, never mind. They're just dead. I thought they would have, like, a removal spell at least. Alright, so having played the deck, Kaisel Larsenist is a bit iffy, especially if you're playing something like uh, against like a uh, Rakdos mid range or Mono Black Control, for instance. Even if you could take out a Shield Rip, for instance, it still feels a bit iffy. But I mean, it does have Ward 1, like Game 1, like Game 2 and 3, I, I think you just sideboard these out. But Game 1, you know, Ward 1. If you factor in Esper Sentinel and Thalia attacks, it's decent. It's like this card is decent. But if you pair this up with Coppercoat Vanguard or Thalia's Lieutenant, uh, suddenly you have a 3 4 flyer. That's okay. That's decent. And even if you ramp this from an Avixen's Pilgrim and then get rid of a creature from your opponent's side, and then next turn you uh, Inquisitor Captain. So, yeah, I mean, give it a go. If you don't want to craft this card, there's a ton of options for humans, right? You have Brood of Cathar. I don't think you can play Skyclave Apparition, by the way, in this deck, because uh, look at our mana base. You also have Reflector Mage, right? So those, those are the options you can take. Um, other than that, Animpa Call. Animpa Call was amazing. <laughs> this card was amazing. Um, I mean, against uh, Mono Black, apparently, uh, Adam Pakal plus Adeline. Like, if you keep playing these cards, not only are they hard to get rid of, but they keep making dudes. These are these are great. I would play four copies of Adeline if it wasn't legendary, but now we have an option to play Adam Pakal. Even off of an Inquisitor Captain or just sheer drawing, you might not find an additional Adeline off of it, and instead you'll find and Pakal, which is going to fit the situation a little bit better. So that's great. I do, however, because of an Pakal, there is a human card that I do wish to play, play, which is a Luminarc Aspirant. So if I can somehow fit maybe like a two copies of Luminarc Aspirant in this deck, it would be awesome because it actually pairs up a lot better with an Pakal. Because if you put the counter here and attack with the Luminar Gasper, and if they don't have a target, attack with your Esper Sentinel, for instance, then you're going to make two artifact creature tokens attacking. So that's, that's gas. Like Thalia's Lieutenant can't do that, right? Because you have to curve Esper Sentinel into a Luminar Gasper and into an Impacol and create two tokens. But Dahlia's Lieutenant, if you replace a Luminar Gasprin here, like, as you can see, you can't put the counter on this card beforehand. So, I mean, it's a bit unfortunate. Overall, like, Dahlia's Lieutenant is just a better card, but with this card, it has better synergy with the Luminar Gasprin. But I just can't see myself actually adding this card, but definitely something you should consider. Luminar Gasprin here. And lastly, another Ixalan card that I've been meaning to play in this deck is this card geological appraiser if this card i mean this card is basically inquisitor captain with worse stats and vigilance keyboard but this is still good and it's also human but the reason why we can't play this card in the in here is because of a double red unfortunately since um we're playing let's see uh we're playing 6 10 14 copies of off color right and 14 is a little bit iffy with double red. I think you need at least 16. And if we raise one of these like um, creature typing lands, for instance, and have more mana confluences, even then it's gonna like it's gonna ruin our cyborg, right? Like we we're not gonna be able to play like things like dire tactics, fragment reality, things like that. So yeah, I mean, it's it's a give and take. Um, maybe I was going to play like two copies of Geological Appraiser, right? 
maybe have this as a, like a cyber card, like go down on Kaisel Lancerist, maybe. But overall, I thought the deck was pretty enjoyable. I really like the Anempical. Wish the tokens that it pooped out wasn't an artifact creature. Imagine if it wasn't. I'm actually surprised it's actually pooping out an artifact creature because this is not even an artificer. It's just a human soldier. So yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed the video so far. And as always, if you did, leave a like, comment below, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.